my, my parents are, are from Germany and so we've gone to Germany to visit family back there and, uh, and I was that kid with his nose pressed up against the window looking out the window the whole time, couldn't pull me away from it and I said right then that when I, when I grow up I want to be an airline pilot and I want to fly to Germany. Um, when it became apparent that I was going to stick with it my father said well if you're going to be a pilot you should probably join the Air Force. So I said okay that sounds like a great idea. So I did ROTC at Michigan State University, went into the Air Force then in uh, 1989, pilot training at Vance Air Force Base where I flew T-37s, T-38s and then stayed as an instructor in the T-37. Um, after that, I went to the F-16 and flew F-16s uh, active duty then for another three years after training. Uh, from that point in time, we separated from the active duty, came here to Wisconsin, where I joined the Wisconsin Air National Guard and flew the F-16 for another 15 years here. At the same time, I got hired by American Airlines and uh, went to the 767, where I got to finally achieve my childhood goal of flying to Europe. Currently flying 737s for American Airlines and retired from the Air National Guard, uh, as is my wife, and uh, fly up here in Rio as much as I can. Once I caught that general aviation bug, we had to have our own airplane. Uh, I needed it to be a tail dragger, and my wife insisted that it have at least four seats, and so the Stinson was a very obvious choice, and I've really fallen in love with Stinson aircraft since that time, so we're extremely happy to have the Stinson. My airplane is a 1948 Stinson Voyager. She's a 108-3. We've been her caretaker for four years now, and this is the third year we've had her on, on her skis. She was restored before, um, before we, we uh, became her caretaker, before we got her, and uh, we did add ADS-B to her, which is a really nice thing, especially when flying up to AirVenture be able to see all the other airplanes and the weather and the winds and whatnot. And uh, I added a cigarette lighter so that I can charge my, uh, my electronic devices. Uh, but basically, she's pretty much the same as she was when we became her caretaker. Having been a fighter pilot and always being interested in the latest and greatest and newest technology, when I retired from the Air Force, my interest really went 180 degrees and I went back to, to really enjoying the roots of aviation. And so the vintage aircraft were really what struck me. Uh, there were some great Arancas out there, but really the Stinson was the, um, you know, the standard of the world, aircraft standard of the world was what Eddie Stinson was trying to build. And so uh, that really, really struck me and he sure did build nice airplanes. And the Stinson is such an easy to fly aircraft. She handles fabulously, uh, very easy to land, um, I, I pretty much wheel land all the time just because she wheel lands so nicely. Um, she's very docile, uh, forgiving airplane, very comfortable, just a great handling airplane. We, we fly all around Wisconsin and, you know, the neighboring states. Uh, the idea, the, the thing I love about the Stinson is I can get in and out of any grass field with, uh, with the Voyager. And so she's just a great airplane for, for doing the kind of flying that I want to do. So the Stinsons were originally built with a Franklin engine and I have friends who have the Franklin and are, are very happy with it. Uh, the Lycoming 180 horse is a little more horsepower than, than, the, uh, than she originally had and is a very, very reliable engine, the, uh, the Lycoming 0360. So the, the ski plane flying, I'm relatively new to it. Uh, obviously no brakes, so that's, that's the difference. And uh, as far as taking off, it's, it's a little bit like getting a boat up on the step when you're cruising along. You, you want to find that kind of sweet spot where the tail's up but maybe uh, a little bit lower than it would be for a wheel takeoff. Landing's pretty much the same. It's, it's not a three-point landing but the nose is a little bit higher because you want to keep those ski tips up in the air. Since I'm relatively new to it, I thought, well, you know, it would be nice to get some information from some other people that fly ski planes. So I, I started a Facebook group called Wisconsin Ski Plane Pilots. Um, a lot of the restaurants that, that cater to boaters in the summer are obviously on lakes. And so several pictures have been posted of ski plane pilots flying in and meeting on lakes and having their $100 burger via ski plane, which is a lot of fun. <laughs>